you're listening to Manhattan with Ash and Josh. Oh, that one stung. I think it's cold outside. That one stung a little bit. I think firstly, we should address the fact that we've been a little bit inconsistent lately. Yeah, And on, we want to let you know, like, we've just had... Been away, had our own lives that we were living to a certain extent. What is it with the hand and the? It looks <laughs> very... a dramatic effect, really. Um, so yes, we're well, sorry for the inconsistencies with the podcast for the last, I think, two episodes. But I want you to know we're back. And he may better. be sorry. I don't really care. I've had a lovely time. Off. <laughs> I've not had to run around and edit like within the space of twenty four hours. So I'm quite, I'm quite happy with it. Deal with it. Enjoy this. <laughs> um, but because we are back, you've got another fantastic intro. Uh, welcome back to the Rain It In podcast with Ash and Josh, the number one equestrian podcast. That is a proven fact. As that is actually a statistic. <laughs> uh, where we delve into the remarkable journey in today's episode of. Yasmin, a talented equestrian who has achieved great success in the industry from her early days with ponies to representing Great Britain on the European team and triumph, triumphing, that's a big tongue twister of a word, that <laughs> no comma in it at all, in the four-star Grand Prix at Bowlsworth International. Yasmin's story is truly inspiring. Join us as we explore her achievements, her passion for horses and her balancing act as a full-time mother. Get ready to be captivated by Yasmin's incredible journey. In today's episode, I know. I thought that was a, a really a nice one. Usually, they sometimes our intros come out like a paragraph long, and I get halfway through it, and I'm like, I just even I've I've oh, lost that was interest. Nice. That was nice. But yes, thank you for coming on. Um, is Thanks it Yasmin or Yaz? Yaz what is you, great. Yaz is Yaz great. Is what, Yasmin's what I've like been naughty. When my mom's like Yasmin, so for Yaz. <laughs> is, it, is it just first name or is it both name? Is it like a double bow? No, like, just Yasmin no. Pinch. You get no, here now. No, just Yasmin. <laughs> Don't scare me. All right, let's. Shall we start? At the uh, the very beginning, where where did your journey in horses come from? Um, obviously, my parents. Um, they were both horses. My dad was in the racing world. My mum show jumped herself, um, and I guess I was just sort of brought up in that sort of lifestyle. I guess um, I actually wasn't that into it. It was my sister that was more horsey than me. Yeah. Um, and then I don't know what changed. She decided that normal life was better. <laughs> <laughs> she went off to like a music school and yeah I carried on doing the ponies oh, amazing um, maybe uh, try moving your um, headphone uh, lead over I could hear it which way that way is that better oh worse peaceful yeah, that's better, <laughs> is that better? <laughs> I heard it I was like is it is it me <laughs> so talk us through that journey you've started ponies you've been very very successful how did you like move forward with your career um, yeah, obviously I rode ponies. Um, I literally started riding when I was like three. I was really young, obviously not properly because you're three. It doesn't yeah. really count, does it? But um, <laughs> And then I did all pony club. I remember doing the one to eight England teams. That was like the highlight of my childhood. I was so excited. And then I remember one day like my parents were like, let's get a horse and do the children on horses. And I was like, I didn't really know what was going on, to be honest. Um, and they bought us like a five-year-old horse, which now I look back as an adult, that's just ridiculous. Um, and we got approved because he was like just too young basically, but they approved us. So I did all the qualifications for the children horses and got selected for the Europeans, which I just never, ever expected. Like my horse was really fat. He wasn't like, he didn't look very good. <laughs> so everyone was like, are you sure? I was like, he's fine. He's great. Um, so yeah, we got selected and we got team gold. He was clear like every day it was amazing it was in turkey um but at the time you just don't know how lucky you are like you don't know what you're doing like you're just living in like a bit of a bubble aren't you like i don't know yeah. how to explain it um we won individual silver because i had one time full um and i think from that i just was like i'm ready now let's go like i was just loving everything about it my parents were enjoying the journey and it just sort of carried on like the step from i still rode ponies a little bit but mostly horses and then i just transitioned straight onto the horses and that was yeah just carried on from that really <laughs> you've touched on it there you had a huge amount of success at a young age yeah i peaked early <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you think that helped or hindered you? Um, I think it helped. I think it taught me a lot. I mean, I was quite grown up for my age and 
I didn't really go to school as often as everyone else did. So <laughs> that's like uh, every horse person. I was just away all the time. And then actually that that's quite sad because I didn't have like, I sound mm. like a proper loser now. I didn't really have any friends <laughs> <laughs> um, because everyone was just like, didn't want to invite me anywhere because I was never around. Um, so then obviously I got like my horse friends, so I do have friends, don't worry. Um, but I think, yeah, it taught me a lot. I loved it. I don't have any regrets. And I think, you know, it, it made me a better rider. I think I had massive experience from a young age. So did you have to do a lot of your like education on the road then while you was trying to do all of that? Yeah, um, I did. And then I still went to school and I just did like five GCSEs instead of, well, how many did you do? We're still five more than Josh has got. So that is... (laughs) I think I've got more than you, so I don't know where that's coming from. No, 100%. I swear I've got more. You don't need them, God. For, for no, you don't. Right you now, don't need them. Let's not, you know, people. I mean, kids all, all my GCSEs but... aren't top level, but I've definitely got, <laughs> got some GCSEs. Yeah, top... and you're, you're doing great. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, 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 it's perception. His mum it? says completely <laughs> otherwise. Yeah, 100%. It's all perception, really. Yeah, yeah that's, I imagine that's quite a difficult thing trying to do that on the road. Yeah, while definitely. Balancing it all. I mean, how yeah. do you. F- find did you learn to balance stuff from that time in your life um I think I just I just went into my own world just did my own thing I was so into it I was so involved and um like hungry to win and do well that I sort of didn't really care that you know I lost a lot of friendships um wasn't really like it's not a normal child because that's like a silly thing to say but I wasn't like you know the standard child that was in school like just going to school every day I was literally riding before school then going to school then coming home riding again and then on like a Wednesday or Thursday we were going off to wherever we were whether it was Europe or you know I mean ponies it was Europe and England but yeah it was completely different to the normal normal day (laughs) we'll delve into this a little bit deeper later but putting your motherhood hat on now yeah would you want your child to do that um yeah I, I wouldn't I mean no because financially yeah, right yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> if That's you're listening smart children <laughs> no um yeah if, if I could afford for them to have that absolutely I think it's amazing and I think it gives you like a focus I mean I'm a very sensible person I've never been um in trouble t- mm. so, t- so far <laughs> <laughs> There's still time. Um, there is still time but I feel like it was, it's a good thing for kids to do because it's a focus. I think I'd really support like anything sporty to do. And I would love for my kids to do something for like GB. I think it's incredible. I fully support that. <laughs> so what did it look for you then taking that jump? You've done really well as a young rider mm-hmm. to now you're in a, you're in a really big pool of top riders. How did you make that step up to sort of senior level? Um, honestly, you've got to have the backing financially. And I was so fortunate that I did. And I think looking back now, if I didn't, well, here I am, I don't Mm. have the backing and I'm not doing it. So if I didn't have that backing, I wouldn't have been where I was. And I'm obviously very grateful for that. And I did do fantastically well. I had some amazing results and I literally like to this day, I remember Bowlesworth's course. I remember the course at Horse of the Year show, like I came third there in the Grand Prix. I remember all these big, big achievements. Um, So I think, yeah, I don't know, just... It's, it's all been amazing. I think it's a massive experience. So, uh, I, I, want, I want to ask a question off the back of that, and I'm trying in my head f- think how I phrase it correctly because <laughs> I mean it's cool. Is it quite, um, uh, and I mean this not to detriment where you're at, at the moment, mm-hmm. but is it, it's amazing to look back on, but is it almost quite sad to feel like it? it isn't there still yeah or? it's devastating. Yeah, absolutely. I'm gutted, like, absolutely gutted that I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. And, I don't know, you know, there's a, there's a mixture of reasons that I don't do it anymore. And a lot has changed in my family. Um, you know, my parents, they, they're divorcing. So things changed drastically. And that is the reason that I'm not really doing it anymore. But um, no, I'm absolutely, yeah, I'm, I'm so gutted. <laughs> yeah, because I imagine that's quite, um, it's actually quite common, similar scenarios to that where people, um their career accelerates and then personal life just happens. Mm -hmm. Um, And as we touched on the, in the equestrian world, a financial side of it as well is is Mm -hmm. like 90% of it. Um, And I wonder to anyone listening, how it is that you manage to deal and cope with that time in your life in that shift from going from one level to a different level. And maybe you might have some insight to share with someone that may be experiencing that, how to navigate those waters. Yeah, I think for me, I 
I've got like quite a childhood. I had the best childhood ever. Like I cannot take anything away from my childhood and my upbringing. And I was so fortunate and all my memories are amazing. And I think that's actually an issue for me because I cling on to those memories and I just want them to like happen again. And actually you just need to just start your own journey. So I did. I was fortunate I could stay at the yard where my parents had and run my own business. Um, and I built up some great owners. That was fantastic. I rode for, you know, Liam Payne from One Direction. That was probably the biggest, amazing achievement I ever. Um, I did all of that and I, I really pushed it. And then I got pregnant again. And obviously, no regrets. That's an amazing. I'm not I'm happy about that. But I lost, I lost everything again. So I think you've just got to start your own journey, push through it and whatever happens happens for, I didn't, for a reason really like I'm obviously I'm delighted I've got two lovely healthy children and I still believe one day I'll come back to it I'm just I'm just waiting <laughs> <laughs> patiently <laughs> what would make you come back to it um pretty much owners okay. I just need someone to be like hey as here's a yard here's some horses let's go that is literally I don't know how else I can do it I can't go and buy a yard I can't go and buy a load of horses I'm not in that situation and I don't know if people don't know that I would want to do it or they think that I don't need help. I don't know what people think, um, but I am desperate to be back out riding. Well, maybe this is the platform where someone <laughs> is it and it, and it goes. Maybe. But it's, it's funny that slightly touching on social media is we talk about it quite frequently um, because we've ex gone through different stages with it. But I assume potentially what you put out on your social media, because you've got a nice following of yourself, mm -hmm. um, people's perception they may not see behind the scenes of all of that. Yeah. And it may look all roses and daffodils. Yeah, and course. realistically, it's very different when you sit in this environment and you talk quite openly and you're like, actually, no, I do need help. Yeah. Like the majority of the industry does. Mm. Is it quite, uh, has social media uh, been a bit of a hindrance to you at all? Or have you found it um, positive? No, I'm really open on social media. I always have been. And I don't, I don't have regrets on that. You know, I lost a baby a couple of years ago and I shared the whole story and actually it was the best thing I did because it, it like healed me because I was traumatized from what I went through. And I think social media can be fantastic in so many different ways. Obviously it can be terrible in other ways. Um, but then there's a point where how do you ask for help on social media without sounding like you're a bit of a victim? Do you know what I mean? Like it's a hard, it's a fine line. But I really try to push my social media as much as I can and I really enjoy it. And I get people message me like, oh, I love like, you know, hearing how you juggle parenthood and, and you know, your because my husband's not horsey at all. He's an electrician, right? <laughs> <laughs> electrical contractor. I get in smart trouble for that. Man. Yeah, <laughs> very smart. Smart man. But like, it's so different. You know, we're not we're not from the same worlds at all in that in that. So, yeah. I've gone off point, but yeah, it's no, 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 <laughs> social media direction. is yeah, the way I think it's great in some ways. <laughs> With your husband, you've touched on it. He's not horsey. You are obviously mm -hmm. it's been your life. Yeah. How has that balance been for you in your relationship? Because I think a lot of people do find struggles where it can, as we know, horses is a lifestyle mm -hmm. that it can cause tension in your relationship at points. Yeah. How have you managed to deal with that throughout your career? So Nick is my husband now, recently. Um, so we actually Congratulations. first... <laughs> thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so different. So I was about to say, so sorry to hear you. He's like, yeah, party. <laughs> <laughs> so we first got together when I was like 15. So he was like my first boyfriend a really long time ago because he was my parents' neighbour. So he used to see me like riding up the road and he just, I think, just thought, what a loser. Like, <laughs> and all his mates, would, I don't know, they all just never understood it. But like, and then we broke up, blah, blah, blah. And now we're back together. I've been back together like nine years, but literally like they just didn't get it for so long. And I think it's the best thing, like the mm. best, like I'm so happy. I'd walk in from having a day on the yard. He'd walk in from work and we talk about normal things. Like it wouldn't be like, oh, that horse, like this and that. I just think it's, oh, I think it's great. Date someone that's not <laughs> Sorry guys. <laughs> no, I, I totally get that because it means you can de-associate yourself from the yeah. yard. Otherwise, I, I totally understand it becomes all consuming because mm. that's all, all you have in common is almost yeah. the horses. Yeah. Um, he says with his equestrian girlfriend sitting <laughs> right in front of him. <laughs> yeah, but I'm currently not riding, so it's fine. That's Yeah, that's very, very true. But then I took it for a different point of view. Mine wasn't financial. Mine was, I just couldn't deal with the stress and pressure of it. Anymore really? With owners, yeah. Wow. I just, I was not... Uh, being a young lad, 
really terrible with my emotions <laughs> at that point in my life. I, I think it's good to be I, like I, that. I, I couldn't deal with dealing with people that at that um, I would have been like 20, 21 who were maybe two or three times my age. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you manage someone's emotions? Uh, yeah. I find that extremely challenging. So I've, I've had my time away from the sport, so I completely understand. Yeah, It's healthy, I think. Yeah. You mm. see like real life. Like yeah. it's weird. I don't know. And it's, it's nice. Yeah, <laughs> you've like, come back to it. You've missed it now. Whereas before yeah. you d- it, didn't That's taken it. a year and a half. Yeah. But then I left school very, very similar when I was 15, 16. It was my mm. life for nine years. Yeah. And then you realise how... Um, you're just that you like you say there's so much more than horses yeah, there out there is, yeah like to not wake up on the weekend and have to worry about yeah. riding that you can actually go and do normal activities mm. is i do think though like 90 percent of the riders need to have a long break and actually be like oh i'm so lucky because mm. i look at some of them and i'm like oh, i was that person you don't know how lucky you are like, i was riding global tours completely mm. oblivious of how much it cost to get me there and the whole operation to get me there. You know, the paperwork that my poor mum was doing every single day. I have no idea. And I think everyone needs that sort of, you know, boost to be like, actually, I've got the best life ever and I'm so lucky and I love my horse. Bloody Mm. pat your horse and enjoy Mm. it. Like, they're always like, oh, well done. (laughs) So when was it that you, because I've not got it on the stats, uh, (laughs) when was it that you last rode for GCT? Oh my God, it was a long time ago. So what has there been know. much of a change that you can notice in terms of, because GCT has always been developing. Yeah, um, it's mass, it's different now, yeah. for sure. It was amazing back then, but now it's, also now you've got all the social media, you've got the videographers. Mm. I wish I had that back then, because mm. it's like, I mainly just because I want to watch it back, but I think you can do a lot more with yourself as a brand nowadays. When mm. I used to do it, it was not the same, but it's. It, I'd say it's more glamorous now. And it's a lot more open to like more people and more people are interested. Yeah. But there's still room to be more, you know, like people do need to support it more. But realistically, it's only been like the last two, three years that probably the equestrian industry has taken sort of social media mm. seriously. Yeah. Because yeah. It, like uh, it's only been recently that you've seen people post about horses that has become normal. Shows have become on board with it mm. and stuff like that. Whereas pr- pr- prior to that, it was just like, horse and hound yeah but we're still behind we're definitely still behind like there's so much i really want to change things i've always said that i'd love to if i'm not riding i'd love to do something that can push it more into you know what what it should be and how you know when when i went to sweden i went to faustabo and i think i did like a nation's cup there and the crowd for sweden was like you've never seen anything in your life like it was nuts like every single person was there like a family day out there having their picnics like we don't have that in england no maybe at hicks did like once a year but twice a year you don't you don't get that yeah i think it's all it's not marketed 100 percent the what optimize in england Mm. for some reason i think that's probably how it's got across to or how it is put across to the general public that aren't necessarily horsey yeah and i imagine in places like sweden there's they must be doing something where it bridges that gap yeah yeah i mean we try it with half step and and try to get a lot of uh mainstream people to understand i think we've so far been relatively successful in getting that message across and we especially for the podcast we'd love to have people that are non-horsey but mm. have interest in it um my dream guest is uh, Christian Horner, the team principal of Red Bull Racing. Oh, okay. Because he owns racehorses. And I think it's right. something like that, someone yeah. that's like not necessarily in it. It's, yeah, yeah. I think that's the sort of exposure the equestrian world would yeah. really benefit from in the UK. And yes. also to hear what he'd do. Yeah. yeah like someone with that knowledge of like business, what could he do to this sport? Yeah. Because we've been, been like around it and heard rumours of interest from big people and mm. big shows or mm. part, trying to put something together. Um, but it just, like you say, it just needs that exposure in the yeah. right way. Yeah. The interest it's, is definitely there. Well, the the exposure is unfortunately is 99% of the time when you get that amount of exposure is always for bad things. Yeah. Yeah. But all the good shows are abroad and you mm. can't get there. Yeah, <laughs> it's so expensive to get true. there. Well, you just look now. No one from Europe com- will come over here to no. compete anymore. And oh, most really? people have left to yeah. Europe. No yeah. one really lives here anymore. <laughs> no, exactly. You'd go train abroad if you're going to go train anywhere, really. Yeah, that's what I did. I lived when I was 18, I left. I went to Belgium. Wow. Yeah. So, what was that like for you then? Best you- experience ever. So yeah. fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun out there. Like on a Wednesday night, you just go to the bar and like we'd all be on the tables dancing. Oh, that's such a <laughs> obviously, episode. obviously, it was great with horses too. <laughs> 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 no, it was so fun. I had like the best time ever and learned loads, obviously. But what was that culture change for you? That's 
quite a big step to move yeah. over to Belgium at 18 years old. It was. Old. Yeah, I might have been 17. I don't know, 17, 18, 18. It was amazing. And I honestly learned loads. Like you see so much in different yards. I went to Michael Whitaker's first here when I was quite young. And then I went to the Philip Arts yard in Belgium. And that was just incredible. And that's when I did the GCT um, and just traveled around. And then I moved to France with Simone de Lest. Um, I think, I don't know, for like a year maybe. That was quite lonely. France was a bit different to Belgium. Yeah. It was no dancing on tables involved. Um, so I came back to England. But it, I think if you really want to do it and you're young and you don't have children or like ties, then 100% do it because you'll learn so much. So over your time, you spoke briefly on feeling lonely when you're in France. Mm -hmm. I do find that the industry can become, and I found it myself, very isolating. Yeah. You've experienced it where it was really good, really fun atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't get why more people, like more groups of riders don't base themselves together. I think they do now more do so. You? I think it's becoming a thing. And obviously in America, like everyone does that. They yeah. all like rent a barn together, don't <laughs> See, they? And my, it's fun. My aunt's based out there. Oh, oh, she's, okay. she's, she's, <laughs> here we go. Every right, other there's context. Here. Every other podcast. <laughs> do you know my aunt? Do you know my well, aunt? She's show jumping now, but um, her name is Justine Dutton. So she's based out there and her partner, they're literally from the world, uh, 10 minutes from the World Equestrian Center in a car. Oh, cool. Um, but I went over there when I was 18 years old and she was just renting a few stables up in a place. Um, Do you want to discuss Akala. any stories that you... <laughs> nice. Thanks, Carl. Um, and, but there was like four Olympic medalists in this pl one plot, uh, numerous World Equestrian like medals and everything. And you're just like, from a rider's point of view, being in that, not only to like run ideas off each other, yeah. um, it's so, so beneficial mm -hmm. to be in an environment like that because... I, you ride by yourself it becomes so so yeah, lonely it is. Yeah, of course especially it is. if you've only got grooms with you yeah you can't really bounce off ideas off each other and yeah yeah you might be training with your trainer who might come in a lot of us we get lazy and we get more and more independent mm -hmm. the more we've been by, by, by ourselves yeah so it's a real real difficult one on finding that balance of it's trying true. to put yourself in no that is i think that is true to be fair i think it, like, we need like a big place where everyone can base here mm -hmm. like a couple of them that'd be a new business venture <laughs> i wonder what the statistics are in the uk and like what links with depression and equestrianism i imagine mm. they're sort of at a decent well i say decent but like a quite a high you get rate. so many lows like you think you're on the road like wednesday to sunday every week you literally come home for like a few days mm. then and say you have a, like a really bad show and then you got to like pick yourself straight back up to like be positive again for the next show. Like it's quite, it would be intense. Yeah. Especially, I was too young, but. Yeah, especially when you think about it as well, you're, it's not just down to you. You've yeah. got your horse. The, it's you, your team behind yeah, you. Exactly. It's the whole operation. Yeah. And you've got to manage that yourself. Whereas a lot of it, if you look at like, say Formula One that we talk about, that is quite similar. Mm -hmm. Whereas a team of people, mm -hmm. the driver isn't running that. No, no, no. He's no. got someone else behind it allowing the the driver to flourish. Whereas yeah. as a rider, you've got. I, I always used to think how hard it is. You've no matter what you've got going on in your personal life or uh, anything, trying to de dissociate yourself yeah. to get on a horse. Um, <laughs> 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 um, and then be able to go and perform. Yeah, literally. And if you had like a bad day, like you just yeah, you just don't know what's going on with someone, do you? And then they've just got to just always perform and. Your horse might be having a bad day, most importantly. We don't yeah. even know. That's the hard thing. It is, yeah. But we are really similar to Formula One. I wish people like would see that, but they don't. Yeah, we do. We um, uh, we relate to that all the time, don't mm. we? Especially when it comes to GCT on how we think they... We've. I feel like we should I come say in it's as more marketing you. team. This is definitely yeah. from you more so than me, but you have an outsider's perspective. Yeah, 100% on the way. Like I, I really enjoy what the GCT are doing, but from the outsider's perspective, there's so much more that they can be doing in terms of um, marketing it. And I think following the likes of Formula, which I think they're trying to do now with mm -hmm. how they run the teams and stuff, but the way they do the promo for that and the social yeah. media for that, there's so much... M what you've got to engage is your audience. Yeah. And I don't think they are fully doing it in the traditional sense. It's great to watch people have fantastic rounds, but it doesn't feel like there is a competitiveness. Yeah. So if you look at the likes of a, a, a Man City United derby, mm -hmm. you know that both teams are on the pitch for 90 minutes and it's back and forth. You've got the fans 
Now, you're not going to do that with horses because you're not going to have like yeah. 20 people jumping around at the same time, though I think would be fantastic <laughs> to see how that would work. Could you imagine? But there definitely needs to be an element where they build it up more as a a team against team mm. rather than the next person's going and the next person's yeah. going. You almost lose a little bit of the... Excitement. Yeah, the excitement and the what they're the, the, the narrative that they're trying mm. to push. And I think as well, I can't remember who it was that we um were speaking to about this and it similarly ties to like personalities and promotion on social media, but not everyone I think because as we said, the question world is so behind, I think people are quite um reluctant to show a mm-hmm. personality. Yeah. And it's no different to like the Conor McGregor's, the mm-hmm. the big UFC fighters. They can sell a show. Yeah. Granted, it's not a fighting industry, but there's no personality to follow. Yeah, yeah, um, definitely. Which I think would be fantastic if you've got um, Josh Hill is going against Ash Howes and GCT, and we're probably going. I'm going <laughs> to have you. I, it it add an element of excitement. Yeah, I think. yeah. No, I get you. It's true. It is true. I enjoy watching it, but I, I do agree with what you're saying. There isn't that. And you know, like with Formula One on that, did you watch the show? Was it Drive to Survive? That yes. was so yeah. good. Yeah. And like, I wish we could see like behind, like listen to behind what goes, do you know what I mean? Like how they do it in the car and that you hear mm. the bad things. Like, yeah. I wish you could see that with the horses. That would be interesting. Yeah. And I think as well for like the Olympics, it'd be brilliant to actually see the team prepare. Yeah. Like they do it, they're slightly different to the Drive to Survive. They do it with um, All or Nothing. With yeah, like yeah, they yeah. done it with like New Zealand in when they were doing playing the Lions in, okay. in rugby, and it was like the build up to the matches, and yeah. then watching like showing highlights of the matches, what's going on with the coaches. Yeah. So like to see I don't know Charlotte Dujardin her preparation before the then what happens with her test and what goes on yeah talking. exactly <laughs> and all that kind of thing would be so yeah. interesting yeah, and I okay. think those are the things that would like attract mainstream media. Mm-hmm. I just I wonder how honest it will be though. I, I think there's, uh, because it, we are behind the times and there is that crossover between like the, the, the rugby side, they can be a bit more open because they've progressively been more open with behind the scenes. Yeah. It, it's like jumping in straight at the deep end for equestrians, especially mm-hmm. the equestrian industry. Yeah. I just wonder how much of that will be filtered. The difficulty would be the horse welfare side of things. Yeah, true. And I think people are worried to show like too much of themselves in case they lose owners because mm. you do lose owners. Like, yeah, it's, it's reckless out there. Yeah, <laughs> like, we've had people say that they've spoken about their mental health and lost owners because they've been struggling. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That's horrendous. Yeah. But it's definitely the interest is there. I mean, especially mainstream TV. We, yeah, we're not in contract anymore. We can talk about it. We're not in, con- we're not in contract, are we? I don't know. No, I'm pretty sure we're not. NDAs. I'll go back. I'll, we'll talk about it. And then if we, I'll just have a look at the NDAs. But we were... Um, honestly, we do not give a fuck. In the um, but we we were uh, in talks with... It's the first time we've had this. Yeah, it is actually. So for... There was, a, uh, was it last year, year before? Um, so basically, uh, HBO mm-hmm. were going to do a TV show similarly around Drive to Survive slash Made in Chelsea... I didn't get the entire gist of this the entire right. way through the pitch, but it was centered around Josh and I. Right. And we were back in talks. There, with, was, some, there was some other questioning people as well. We weren't told who it was, but yeah. Right. Yeah, but it was it's centered around us and our lifestyles. It made zero doing. sense to do us, by the way. Yeah. We're not saying that it should have <laughs> been not us. a big deal. <laughs> but yeah, um, it made no sense to us. We were like top riders. It would have made sense, but me and you really didn't add up. Yeah, but. it was like their, um, uh, it was at the top of their list to make and they were like really really keen to have it done um and they put it above uh catwoman the film because hbo oh. had um merged with so oh, it's no it's discovery Sorry. plus it was discovery plus tell a lie and um that and they put it above the catwoman that flopped so they like spent like 90 million on it then Fuck that right off, and then they still had us. And we were like, Yeah, it's greenlit, it's greenlit, it's greenlit. And with my acting background, I was going to Josh, I was like, Well, this never happens, so this is <laughs> this is definitely going to be good. I know in my head, I'm thinking, Well, we're going to start traveling the world, <laughs> we've made um, it, yeah. And then, um, Discovery Plus merged with HBO, uh, and then they had to re pitch it all to HBO. 
and well, just across the seas. They they sort they they're like, yeah, it sounds good, but they're like, mm. we just don't get it. Yeah. But they're probably right. <laughs> they're probably <laughs> right. In fairness, they probably saved a load of money. Um, and I don't think they understood British humour as well. And I think so. <laughs> Thanks, HBO. But if you really want to revisit it, then um, you know where we are. <laughs> but yeah, there's definitely the interest there. And like, we've got other like TV shows not lining up for us, but pitches that we'd love to do because mm. we know that there would be definitely a connection with an audience there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the industry is so big. Mm-hmm. I don't think mainstream people understand how many yeah. people have are in or have links to horses. Do you yeah. remember Only Fools and Horses, but like the Only Fools and Horses show jumping? Yeah, but I don't. I didn't see it, but I did hear about it. Yeah, like what? that's what I think. Like celebrities. There was something. Yeah, uh, there was something. Celebrities like went show jumping and stuff. That was from my auntie's house. Was it? Oh, did you look at that? Oh no, it was. <laughs> oh, no. Was it the jump? They did celebrities did show jumping, didn't they? Yes. Was it that one? Ooh, that what, what? What one? It wasn't it on TV. Yeah, it yeah. was on TV. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah I, think I don't think I ever watched it. Yeah, but that, I heard that about was it. filmed in my auntie's garden. Oh, that's yeah. Never, never went. <laughs> That's a fun fact, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. There you go. So we've touched on some hardships that you've sort of faced in your career. Mm-hmm. How have you overcome them? Oh, I haven't. <laughs> no, I don't know. I'm still, I am still struggling, actually. Not like struggling, but I am, I still have my days where I feel really, really low. And I'm just like, oh, I just wish I was out riding. But instead of being low about it, I just have to make the best of it. Like I chose you know, to have children and to be a mum young, which is great. And now I can focus on my career. So I'm sort of just trying to look at, you know, different angles and be positive. And I've got lots of really exciting things coming up. And I'm hoping eventually I will be back riding. But I think you just have to be positive as hard as it is. There's no point of just being low and thinking, what if? Like, you just, I had to grow up pretty quick. And yeah, I've learned a lot from that. um... (laughs) I don't know how to say this without it. I'll just say it, sorry. Have you you thought about therapy? And I don't mean that. Um, Do I I need it? No, I I knew that was only going to come out one way. Just because we've had um, sports psychologists on, um, you've been through therapy, been quite open with your journey with it. We know loads of people in the equestrian world that on and off camera have spoken about their journey through therapy and Mm. how much it's helped. I'm just wondering if that ever has ever crossed your mind. I would speak to someone for sure, but I don't think I'd like actively go out and be like, I need therapy. Mm. But, I am like, I'm super happy, like in my, I want to say normal life. It doesn't sound right. It sounds really bad. (laughs) My normal life, like with my children, my husband and like no horses, I'm like top of the world. And then the other side of it, I'm like, horses is all I know. I Mm. left school. I left school at like 14, maybe 13 to do horses. Like what else can I do? Mm. So now I have to like go back to the drawing board, which is why I'm pushing my social media and like really trying. I've really tried with the presenting, which I struggle with. I can't get a job with that really. Like I've really tried and I don't know why that is because I don't think I'm bad. Like everyone was like, oh, you're really great at that. You should, you know, carry on. And then it goes back to like, are we just really behind and they don't want to change, you know, have new things. I don't know. But I love presenting. I'd love to do that. So these TV shows, you know. There you go. We'll keep you on <laughs> yeah, for that. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, but yeah, no, I don't know how you overcome it. I think you just got to make the best of a situation. I can completely understand that. The, how I would describe it is unfulfilled. Mm hmm. That you just kind of lost your, what was your purpose. Yeah, literally. Yeah, literally. that is literally it. Like, I'm genuinely really happy in my life. Yeah. But that burning desire to get up and do something, yeah. you just don't quite have anymore. No. And I think um, I just, I wanted to go to the Olympics. That was like, I know everyone does, but like I, that for me was where I was going to go in my head and I had no other path in life. So I think not being able to fulfill that... It's like a huge goal, you know, that mm. I really wanted to do and be like, kids, look what I did. <laughs> don't beat yourself up. Yeah, so I was going to be a really successful actor. I oh, don't worry. It's still got time. And, I'm, well, <laughs> and now I do a podcast with Josh. <laughs> still waiting on sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> so you mentioned exciting things. Mm-hmm. What are they? Um, there's quite a few exciting things. Some I'm not going to tell you. Of course. Because we fine. don't know when this podcast is going out. <laughs> Um, but I have got a very exciting thing. So I'm really into my fitness, like I'm massively into fitness right now. And I see how these online personal trainers do all these like well, online personal training services. So I thought, why not do a horse training riding subscription service? So we are launching that basically. So I will be 
riding um, and explaining the, de- the like demonstrating the exercises all mic'd up and then the subscribers can then watch it on their phones or their iPads, whichever. And they can literally take that wherever they want. So if they're in Hong Kong, <laughs> they yeah. can do it in Hong Kong, wherever they are in the world. Um, and then we can, you know, I'm there to keep you accountable and like help you reach goals and just be like an online then what not a PT? I guess it is a P- yeah, personal trainer. trainer. Yeah, the same trainer. thing, yeah. yeah. HT, horse yeah, trainer. HT, HT, online HT. There you go. Um, so yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. That's all sort of happening now. Um, and I've teamed up with an amazing team of videographers. And I love working with them. So I'm really looking forward to it. So yeah, I can't wait for that to sort of come out. <laughs> so you said this sort of the idea comes from fitness that you have a lot mm-hmm. of love for. Do you think rider fitness is taken seriously enough? No, definitely not. <laughs> Love that. Let's go. <laughs> Definitely not. Let's go. No, but it's only now. Like, so when I called the gym that I joined, so I joined like a small personal training gym called SPPT in Crawley, and it's like the best place in the whole entire world. And I rang the lady that owns it and with her husband, and she said, um, "What did she say to me?" I was something like, oh, "I've got, I've got children, and I've literally just had a baby, so I don't know if I've got time." And she was like, "Yes, you'll make time. If you want to do it, you'll make time." And I was like, "This woman just doesn't understand. I've got a baby, mm. <laughs> and now I'm in it. She's got children. She's got a young baby, but now I'm in it, and I'm so into it. You make time. Like there is no excuse because you, when you really enjoy something, you'll just, you know, work it out." Um, and I, it's made me realize how much better a rider I would have been if I was training like I am now. What do you think would have been the the benefits? I'd be stronger mentally. I'd feel better. Like it just makes you feel good training. Doesn't Mm. it? Like, I don't know. I think I go into the gym and I'm like, I don't want to go. And then I come out and I'm like, Whoa, I'm a new woman. (laughs) I feel great. And I think it would just start your day better. You would be so much stronger. There's loads of, I I think there's probably a main one as well. I would highlight is there's a safety element as well. Mm -hmm. Like if you're going to fall off and your, your core is stronger, you've got muscle on your bone, your, actually can take a hit because it's used to living heavy weights yeah. or heavier weights than normal that level of impact is going to be far less damaging than what yeah. it is if you've never been definitely but like, what, how many like ripped riders have you seen like, well, they're all broken on. towards the end <laughs> yeah, that's it that's because they don't take care of themselves because it's yeah. all they they spend a lot of time and edu- energy looking after the horses but not themselves that's the thing though i always said that i can do nutrition for a horse and for like you know, all that element, I can get a horse fit, but I couldn't do it for myself. Now I can, but back then, it's funny, isn't it? Like you just don't, You like you say, you focus on your horse. Yeah, like I I went through a phase when I I needed to be competing to do something. So I ended up doing a bit of powerlifting. Oh, cool. uh, Which was quite a unique thing to do. You should have seen the onesie he had to wear. (laughs) No, 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 that's right. Something special. I would say it was more of a leotard. (laughs) It it was like literally the man king of the boy. No, I don't want to see. Um, (laughs) But um, I've then... Like I've tried different training styles and recently the guy that I've got, like who's my PT, more of a co- lifestyle coach, but yeah. um, he is incredible. Like his knowledge, we both know him. Um, but his, a couple of times as well. Yeah, yeah. But his focus is all about the posterior chain. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what, right? The way that you've trained me now has been like, this has been the biggest change where I've been like, this would have helped my riding. Because yeah. from when I was gymming, I'd end up getting quite tight. So I'd be slightly right, right, uh, round shouldered. Mm-hmm. Uh, now every Saturday I do a thing called rucking where I have a backpack with 20 kg on my back. I just go for a walk or a light jog for 60, 90 minutes. It's completely changed my posture. Yeah, that's And crazy. made me so much stronger in my, in, in my posterior train, mm. which is, I think, the biggest thing for riders to take yeah. into consideration consideration um and i was like rucking is actually the best thing that's that i could say word. for riders rucking. Rucking. yeah literally. he's trying to get me to do rucking. it at the moment but it was like you, it comes from it's like a military training that's what they do with the backpack yeah, yeah. so he's he's ex, he's ex royal marines um but genuinely i was like this has changed if i looked at myself before and after i've mm. always gymmed always trained i take care of myself with physios and mobility yeah that has been the biggest change in me since you just need a toddler just have a toddler yeah, that's just... what i do just... <laughs> <laughs> Go. i've got two kids i just walk around with them Go. <laughs> yeah. my girlfriend's currently here <laughs> <laughs> hello <laughs> but i think it is becoming more prevalent in the industry that riders are seeing themselves more of athletes as well and not just the horse mm-hmm. like that would come with the sports psychologist and having a team for that and then yeah. they'll ask we speak to a lot of them and a lot of the top riders are starting to go down the fitness route and have their own nutritionist and they are looking at their longevity as well yeah. because 
if you have a, a fantastic horse, say it's from an owner and you can ride that to a great ability, fantastic. And whether the, it's, the ride's taken away from you, the horse passes away, whatever mm-hmm. the circumstance it is, what do you then have to offer than just going, well, I had a really good horse and I got really lucky that yeah. I can ride that. You need to be able to go to other owners or sponsors or whatever and say, look, I have this ability. It's no different to like a pitch deck or a sales to an yeah, investor. Yeah. You've got, yeah. to, look, I'm an investment worth making and this is what puts me above the rest. Yeah. I think it, a time will 100% tell between, uh, the, to show the difference between those that are and those aren't. Mm-hmm. It's those little little advantages or different training techniques that people use. I can't remember who won the uh, Olympic gold medalist, but uh, they were sort of like he weighed everything, like the lightest oh. saddle, lightest stirrups, oh. and everything. Really? That was Ollie Fletcher that told us. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. And then we've had another rider who's a show jumper, but he was previously a jockey. Right. And from the weight categories and all the weight stuff that he yeah. had as a jockey, has he's really taken that into how he rides. Oh, that's crazy. And I was like you know what that just does make sense yeah if the horse has got less weight on him yeah, yeah. they will jump surely that, is, that yeah. is the thing though if you had less weight well, yeah. on these horses yeah, yeah no, like... that is one thing that we have to <laughs> talk about who was it said about weight categories who, that, was, remember... that was Frankie oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah he said about weight categories didn't he yeah and he said that well, there's no difference to like say you have him boxing UFC or the rest of it you have different weight categories mm. maybe, I'm, maybe I don't know if that's something that introduced that it becomes a bit more competitive in that nature yeah, you know, it's who's... a difficult one because people end up starving themselves as well it's a real difficult yeah, one yeah you don't want to go to the other end of the spectrum and then I think it's changing though like I'm doing <laughs> I'm saying you probably won't see me ever again after this going to die <laughs> I'm doing High Rocks have you ever heard of High Rocks no no. no. I'm doing High Rocks next week. Next Sunday, I'm going to die. And this lady that I know does it, she rides. And she messaged me the other day, like, there was quite a few riders that I know of that are doing it. I was like, oh, go on then. Okay. It's mental. Don't. Yeah, What's High Rocks? What is it? What is I can't it? tell you. I'm too scared. <laughs> it's like eight kilometers of running and eight exercises. So you run a kilometer. Yeah. Then you do a thousand meters on the ski erg. Then you do a kilometer of running. Then you do, I don't know what it is next. I should know. Sled push, for example. I have right. to push like 153 kg. Then run another kilometre. Then you have to pull it. It's like that for eight times. That sounds absolutely brutal. I yeah. don't even want to do that. <laughs> and I, that sounds is. very... Like, I, don't even, I think that's like a next yeah, level I, That sounds like really fun though because it's really challenging. Well, there's really good music. So I'm kind of hoping that the vibe's just going to take <clears throat> me. Like, Where they, where's that? Uh, London XL. Oh, oh, is, it like, is it like a CrossFit sort of thing? Of no, it's, I don't think it's cross. I don't do CrossFit. No, it's like hybrid, I think. Yeah, hybrid you do athletes. a lot of yeah. hybrid training and all yeah. that stuff. I need it's to do best. more it's of so that. It's so fun. Yeah. My cardio is it's so bad. The mental stimulation that I get from it. It's, it's wicked. I love yeah. it. And I'm really into running. But like Nick just sent me into a half marathon when he had a bottle of wine. He thought it was funny, which that's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, you did I don't a, you, run. You did a marathon hungover. Uh, <laughs> I did a, ma- yeah, what, a worse full than hungover. marathon. No, a half marathon. I'm pretty sure you were still drunk I, when you did I, it. I, I was... Did that help? <laughs> yes. Genuinely. <laughs> genuinely. I, I was smashed. It was so bad. Like I... I'd left my shoe, my running shoes for the event. Oh no! At the party. <laughs> Such a dick. Why would you go to a party the night before? Yeah, I, I was like nineteen, so oh, okay, bad well. decisions, you know. I left my running shoes out there. I couldn't get them, so I had to take my dad's <laughs> work trainers because <laughs> I believe they were I work was, shoes, like pointy winkle pick. Yeah. They're still toe capped as well. No, no, no. My, da- my dad's <laughs> work shoes, which were like the only shoe, like literally they're covered in mud and everything because oh, no. everyone was asleep because I had to leave so early and I couldn't get in the house because I'd, oh, I'd no. not made it back in time and forgotten a key. <laughs> so oh, God, I'd literally disaster. had my old, like gym kit that I stole from my friend's house that wasn't like a gym person no. so for me to run in my dad's work shoes and I did it in like one, one hour and 34 which well, I didn't is think, that not fast? Yeah, I, that is quite fast. So I, I don't put, know how fast. I I'm... think I was so drunk. <laughs> just bolted. That I just <laughs> ran the whole thing. How many times did you throw up? I know I was fine, absolutely fine. That's then mental. I did it. Two, I did it two years later. Took my training so seriously, like really good oh, preparation, slower, good sleep, and I was slower. Hour forty five, and it was the worst <laughs> amount of pain I'd ever been in in my life. Oh, it don't was say dreadful. that. <laughs> but that was a half marathon. Do it smashed. That is- <laughs> no, I don't drink. <laughs> well, that, that, that's, if you take one thing away from this episode, then it'll be... Yeah. But if your husband does listen to this, Christmas present, like listening to what you do, yeah, he, sh- he should buy you an ice bath. 
Oh, yeah, I really want to do that. And I've then, got one outside. Oh, should we go? <laughs> <laughs> go I, know, I wouldn't. It is, uh, it oh, no, I cleaned it. I cleaned it. it. Oh, you did clean it. Oh, that's it. gross. No, he, well, he's, <laughs> Josh no, hasn't no, been I've not been here for a while. It's so like it's been outside water. for six weeks. Oh. And I went there and it was awful. And I was like, this is so bad that I even I won't get in it, which I'm known for being like <laughs> quite messy. I and do want to try it, though. It is so good. It genuinely has been the best thing that's ever happened to me. No, I'm too scared. Everyone says that. But then I follow this girl on Instagram called Perry Shard. I don't know if you've heard of her. She's like a fashion I don't know what, what she calls her icon. but yeah icon yeah. <laughs> but she gets him with gloves and a hat on and socks I think well, that's quite, yeah. kind of crazy you, my girlfriend I did it for three minutes yesterday how long are you meant to do it for that's a long time uh, like three minutes is pretty good you know like uh, now because it's so cold obviously you don't normally yeah. you don't you actually don't need to put ice in it now because, oh, I see. Um, but yeah three minutes is I would like to do that like genuinely for your like mental well-being Best thing ever. What about that? And then straight into like a sauna. Does that work? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, what I, I like. I Straight into the hot tub afterwards. <laughs> yeah, all that. Oh yeah. my God, amazing. Yeah. So good. So yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, like you were just, genuinely, there's nothing more peaceful for Maybe you. Maybe I'll buy it for him, but it's for me. Yeah. <laughs> smart way to do way. It. That's a smart way of looking at presents. <laughs> yeah. I always I, do that. I, um, I did it for the first time a couple of months ago now. I think it was a, few, a couple of months ago. And I'm quite... Um, I speak quite quickly. I stumble over my words. And I've got ADHD and I'm quite like sporadic and my energy, yeah. very anxious energy, which people wouldn't see from social media. And reluctantly, after weeks and weeks of Josh badgering me to do it, <laughs> I went, fuck it, all right, we'll do it. And honestly, I came out and wasn't, I was the clearest I had ever been. And really? we, did, we did a podcast afterwards. And after we finished, I was like, I actually think I asked sensible questions and I didn't say anything <laughs> that would fully get us cancelled. So many people rave about it though. Like, yeah. There's a lot Incredible. of benefits. Like um, Dana White was uh, doing a talk on it a while ago because he's hugely into cold water therapy. And he, um, he was speaking, like it's scientifically proven that if you do it for like four days consecutively, that will even out your hormone levels of your dopamine and serotonin, oh, which wow. for our generation with social media and the way we, yeah, the world yeah. we live in is so like, oh, well, people's like levels are yeah. yeah all over the place. They're not normal. Is it good for weight loss? Yeah, best thing Excellent. for weight loss. Brown brown <laughs> fat, it burns. Really? Like it's genuinely, um, it's a guy called uh, Gary Brecker. He's a human biologist. He genuinely is like the only person I'll take health advice from. Yeah. He's a genius. He's been on the Joe Rogan and other things as well. Oh, good luck um, Yeah. Gary, like look at Gary Brecker because he used to work for an insurance company and he would predict your death to the exact month. Looking at oh, your, like, yeah, honestly. Gosh. I don't so, want to know. He'd tell you the number of the mm. bus that hit you. Like, <laughs> he, he, he works. I don't want to know. He, he works with Dana White and he gave Dana White 10 more years to live. Changed everything after looking at his bloods and everything. Yeah. Just from his bloods, he was able to tell Dana White what his parents struggle with. Mm. And all this. And Dana White, obviously, he's being UFC, he's like black and white. He was like, how do you know this? And I think it, from what was initially his life expectancy of 10 years, it's now 35 after wow. working with him. Yeah, but is that because that's been like a really good plug for him and he's just like, oh, good, my, my yeah, things are really working. Easy. Yeah, I've saved your life. Yeah, literally. Like, like, it, it's, <laughs> like, it's only like small changes on what worked for him. So even like Jim Galvin, the um, Royal Marines, was all about you sending off like a hair follicle and getting your blood tested to see what mm. works for you. So what, a diet that might work for me yeah, that's you. true though, stuff like that. I'd love yeah. to know all that. Um, and that's basically what he does. He tests you for what you need as a person. Yeah. Um, and yeah, he is an absolute genius. And yeah, he done that's a study crazy. about cold water therapy and it is the best thing for burning fat over mm. anything. And it's only three minutes a day. Linking it with um, horses, well, I think it would be really good for that and why equestrians should do it is if you're competing and it's, it, it's it's high intensity, you're trying to, you're worrying about the grooms, you're worrying about this or the rest of it. I know when you, a lot of people say they compete, they just black out, but that nervous energy that you build up beforehand can obviously affect your performance, but then also mm -hmm. the horse's performance is, it, it is the horse is taking whatever energy you're giving off. It's, that's going to affect how they jump or yeah. dressage or whatever. I think if you as a rider want to optimize it to every inch that you can, if you was doing cold water therapy on an everyday mm. standard, but if you was doing that on the day that you were competing or before you're With competing, Honestly, because that is how it's like three hours you have that dopamine kick. There's a level of peace with it. So there's yeah. a period where it prolongs yeah. the day, but it's like at its peak. Yeah. So if you was competing at nine and you was doing it at six in the morning, one, you cannot make your day any fucking worse <laughs> than starting it in ice water. Yeah. So even if you lose, you're like, 
I did ice water this morning. I'm fine. <laughs> I've won already. But you're in that period where actually you could go in there and everyone's like worrying in the warm up and everything. And you're like, mm. oh, I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. That, what an advantage I think that yeah. I have. I don't see why people wouldn't take that opportunity. Yeah, that is a valid point. I like that. So you've done presenting yep. on social media and, t- and television. Yep. How, what was that like? I love it. I'm not shy. I'll just talk. How like, did you get into that? Um, how did I get into that? So originally it was through a company called Events Through Lens. When they first started, I rode um, and like he did pictures and videos and stuff and we worked together. And then um, Horse and Country got in touch. So I did a bit with them and I loved it. Um, and I think actually because I've ridden at that level and I know the riders personally, that was like a bit of an advantage for me. So I can like watch the course and be like, oh, I saw you did six strides there instead of seven. And that's probably why you won. Like just little things mm-hmm. like that. So I think that was always... Um, something I had above other people maybe but and also most people are still riding so they can't maybe present so that I have that advantage too um, but I really like it and I'd love to do more of it so fingers crossed something something mm. will come mm. <laughs> it's good fun with the riding with the presenting how did you balance that with motherhood Um, I think just having an amazing support system is the answer. Like my husband is really hands on. He's really helpful, obviously. And um, my mum and his mum both help us. So I think we've just sort of got a good little team going. It's the only way. Like I help him. He's really into fitness. So, you know, he'll go and do his thing and I'll have the children. And then now he'll help me when I want to do. You just work. You've got to. You're, You're a team at the end of the day, aren't you? So... I think what you when you want something and I think with fitness, for example, he knows how it makes him feel, like how good it makes you feel. So he's like, I understand why you need to go. So like if I've had a bad day with the kids and they're like really whingy, he's like, Do you want to go to the gym? I'm like, Yes. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you, <please. laughs> yeah, literally. It's just yeah, it's teamwork. <laughs> Sessions four hours. Why? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Don't know. laughs> no, I go to like Tesco after. I'm like, still at the gym. <laughs> Smart way of doing it. Smart way. <laughs> Full riders. Uh, this would be female riders like having children you Mm -hmm. said that you had your children young Mm -hmm. and the effects it has on your career yep what's that like (laughs) Uh, do you recommend having kids should I be honest (laughs) yeah 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 yeah, yeah. should I get get pregnant pregnant or not (laughs) no you definitely you probably can't get pregnant actually but you should get pregnant it's 21st century maybe (laughs) I can I think um, I think it's really sad that women I think we're really disadvantaged in our sport basically and I think that sucks and I think unless you're with a show jumper or you're you've got some sort of system where your horses can continue like me for example I didn't have that and I don't want that don't get me wrong Mm. um but I lost all my owners the second I got pregnant and I think most people can either continue or like me they they lose it all so it, it is really tough I think on women you know men just continue the whole time through like they don't have to stop for pregnancy and you know it's not like I rode for I think six months I think I jumped at Hickson at six months um but you can't ride like you no. know much more really realistically and then I had a c-section so I couldn't do anything for 12 weeks anyway so I do think it's really tough on women but then I don't want to play like the victim to me in a women, but no, like. But, it, but it's something that you, you have to go through. Yeah. Yeah. And so we can't talk from our perspective either because. Well, I had a C section, so I don't know. <laughs> <wrong, but. laughs> no, it is hard, but it's, I guess it is just what it is, isn't it? And for someone that may be considering that, what would your advice be to them? I don't know. I actually don't know because I was really open and honest. I told my sponsors, I told my owners so early, like really early, just to give them that heads up. I try to be really like transparent and honest. Um, So I don't really know like what else you can do unless Mm. you have some sort of agreement where you can get them to somebody else. I mean, I did that. I did that with Tommy, the horse I rode for Liam Payne. I sent him to my best friend's husband, Dennis Lynch. Um, and he was going to continue riding him whilst I was having the baby. And then I was going to take him back on. Obviously things changed. No comment. Um, and yeah, like, I, I, I don't, I actually don't know what you can do. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's really it's just, hard. I, if there's enough, if, I don't think there's anything the industry can really do. To, no, there to, isn't support. I don't, I don't know how can is there, there be is support? There a system, yeah. As I say, is there a system that could be in place for support? 
I don't know, because at the end of the day, you choose to have children. That's your, that's a you problem, isn't it? It's not. Yeah, well, yeah, it's nature, isn't it? Yeah. It's re- reproductive. You're not going to yeah. Yeah, de- deprive yourself of motherhood. But I think it also puts people off having children. Like a lot of these riders don't have kids till really late or they don't have them at all. And I think that's really sad because you prioritise your career. And I guess as a mother now, you can look at that and be like, you can see the perspective of actually you should 100% have kids if you yeah. want if you're thinking about it. life's way too short. Life is way too short. And I think now I'm out of the industry, you know, well, quite a lot mostly. But you, like you say earlier, we can look back mm. on it. I think life is too short and you should do what you want to do. And I'm so glad I've had my children. And now I'm ready to focus on my career. I'm still young. I'm yeah. 30. I've still got time. <laughs> so I think it's weird though, isn't it? We actually have grown up in a world where that it, we prioritize our careers mm-hmm. over family yeah and it's taken me to step back out of horses and realize well, wow that's such a yeah honestly mind my words but fucked up way of looking <laughs> at life mm. yeah. because mm. family is what you have your mm-hmm. that's your yeah. your line your your life but we uh really look as career as our defining thing in life which mm-hmm. i think is sad yeah because it was never like that previously it's but only also, adjusted over time i think it's also about what you use career for is like if you've got people to prove wrong mm-hmm. that's also a very high career motivator so i need to prove something to myself to prove to other people and i think it's stepping back from that materialistic side yeah. of i have these accolades and achievements because people at the yard when I was 12 who said oh shit I can have that I'm actually (laughs) jumping in the Olympics and it's trying to understand actually what is your true values and what is the the core materialistic of wealth Mm -hmm. rather than the uh perceivable which is uh the big Range Rover the big house the 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 really expensive horses you may be richer as than say some of the top show jumpers who are going you know what i don't want to have a family because i don't want to settle down and lose the ride and i don't want to Mm -hmm. lose sponsors whereas actually you've achieved fantastic things you've got fantastic opportunities and ideas that you're exploring now and you'll get to do that with what is the true meaning of life and is 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 being a mum being a a wife enjoying family and Mm -hmm. having true connection i think that that makes you richer than anyone that Ops yeah. differently, personally. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Totally. Totally agree with that. And then also those memories you actually have to share with some mm-hmm. with someone yeah, as well. 100%. And people. We've actually, I've come across people that maybe have taken the career seriously and ended up not having family. And <clears throat> they won't mind me saying this, but they are the saddest people that I've known. Mm. Because that, now they have nothing. They missed out on it. Yeah. They missed out on it entirely. But now I can also show my kids. Like, I think it's more of a... There's more of a push and more of a drive for me now because I've got two young boys. Like my eldest is nearly seven and obviously the little one, he's 18 months, so he doesn't really have a clue what's going on. (laughs) But like the seven year old, I can, you know, I can be like, look, I'm going to the Olympics. Like, and he'll be like, oh, that's so cool. Do you know what, like it makes it more, it's Mm. more of a drive. I want to show them like you can do stuff if you really push. And And, and I think as well, they say that about parenthood, the best way to teach your children is show them. Yeah, yeah. Monkey see, monkey do. Yeah, 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 exactly. 100%, that's how we we learn. You look at like a lot of these like young show jumpers coming through now, like Mm -hmm. the likes of Ollie Fletcher, Harry Charles, the list goes on. Yeah. Their parents did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They saw it all. And yeah. they follow. They follow too. You've got both, like you've got Sienna and Scarlett as well. Yeah, and so on and so on. I'm sure I've missed so many people out there, and I'm really. I just sorry. think all that matters is that you're enjoying it. Yeah, that's the main thing. And yeah. like, are all these riders enjoying it? Are they having a great time and like f- feeling fulfilled? Because, like, when they do an amazing round, like they jump double clear in like a World Cup or something, and there's like no smiles and there's like a minimal pat. I watch that on like, are you happy? Because you look yeah. really sad. Yeah. And I would do anything to swap with you right now. But yeah, I think a lot of it is, yeah, a lot of them are, I think, reluctant to have a personality mm. at the moment. I think I think they're scared to, to be quite honest. I think the industry isn't welcoming. Why would it be? It's cancer culture as well. I mean, we, we've we've been uh, we've been victim to it, <laughs> uh, but we we we're, we're semi aware of it all the time because of. Mm the way we look and the way we vocally address things and mm-hmm. publicly speak about things and call shit out when shit needs calling out. Yeah. And, and not a lot of people do that. And because the world is so, or the industry is so focused on, have I got a sponsor? Have I got an owner? Yeah. You don't want to all of a sudden get dropped by everything. Cause then 
where does that leave you? Yeah. Whereas I don't write professionally, so so we want. I'm yeah. Getting work. Uh, and Josh is just well, well, your career's slightly over anyway, so doesn't <laughs> doesn't really matter. Um, but no one has peaked too soon. <laughs> no, that was but, me. Don't worry. But, it's so, but people, yeah, it's frustrating because there's there's such a yeah. They're, they're, I think they they could show and offer more. And I think though they're scared to do that. I think they'd actually have see a more positive reaction by being more true to who they are yeah, online. Definitely. Think, and they get following as well because you'd want to mm. follow that personality, wouldn't you? Like we were saying earlier. Mm. Yeah. And like the people that aren't there and you end up losing because I had to learn this the hard way is no owner is worth like no. sacrificing who you are as a person. No, definitely. Um, and I think you'd cut out the crap around you as well if people don't want to stick around you. So what? Let them go. You'll be happier without them yeah. rather than having fake people around you. 100%. Say that, bitch. Love that. <laughs> um, I've got a, 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 a burning question. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Really easy. Really easy one. So um, how the fuck does One Direction's Liam Payne just <laughs> reach out to someone to ride a horse? We're just good friends. No, joking. <laughs> <laughs> so I had an in. So my sister um, was his day-to-day manager and... Obviously, you get friendly. She got friendly with him. They were working all the time together. And I think it just came up in conversation. I don't know how. Um, and he had done something with horses before. He'd had like, he would become an owner or something for some, I don't even know who it was now. Um, but nothing happened of it. So I had a bit of a point to prove. And obviously, I had a very famous person like putting trust into me. So yeah, the conversation came up, went for dinner, went to Nobu actually, it was really nice. <laughs> yeah, it was well nice. Um, and it was just all systems go, literally went, found a horse. I mean, it was nuts. Like it was a, the coolest thing ever. And I just chose such a lovely scopey horse, but such a hard horse, um, which I think was clear to see, like, you know, people did struggle to ride him. He wasn't an easy horse. Um, but yeah, it all sort of, it all sort of happened quite quickly. And obviously I saw it as a long-term thing and it wasn't a long-term yeah. thing, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a great experience. I mean, like, it's pretty cool to see Ray for someone from One Direction. That's so weird. <laughs> it's mad, so, isn't it? So does he know much about horse? Like, is he actually like into it um, or was it just like a... No, it was, it was like a bit of a financial investment Smart. and yeah, well... <laughs> well, yeah, well, <laughs> it probably was... <laughs> better off going vintage cars, but horses will do. I think we were going to, we hoped to do big things and we hoped that, you know, we could sell and buy more and, you know, eventually go on like the GCT and show him that side of it. Um, I lost a baby without, I didn't, I didn't know I was pregnant and end up the baby. I had an ectopic pregnancy, had to have an operation and nearly died. It was like, it was really savage. And so then the next time I did fall pregnant, like you just said, Mm. like nothing's, your life is way more important. And Mm. I had to prioritize me at that point. So obviously it just sort of came to an abrupt halt which which sucks because yeah I really wanted that to be like a long-term partnership and also that was on my own back like that wasn't anything to do with my parents I was at this point on my own and I just felt proud of myself that I'd got my own owners okay with help from my sister but um I was just networking yeah I was just doing something for myself and I was like yes and obviously my parents were really proud of me and they were like you know you're doing really well and yeah it kind of sucked that it was just all taken Mm. but yeah yeah, it's that's, that's it just networking. Speaking yeah. of networking, do you reckon Liam Payne want to come on the podcast? Um, do you want Liam Payne on your podcast? <laughs> Fucking yeah, that'd be a good collaboration. <laughs> to be fair, I would happily. I wouldn't say no. <laughs> He did loads of podcasts for a bit, didn't he? Did he? Yeah, he was doing. He oh was yeah, doing there was there, oh, there was yeah. There was big drama. About yeah, it. there was big drama. Yeah, there was. I can't remember exactly what it was. He was slagging off all the yeah. other members. Yeah, he was. <laughs> he was. Maybe he'll come and just slag a load of people. He might slag me off. <laughs> oh, t- well, we'll get yours out first. And then it doesn't really matter. But he probably doesn't even remember my name anymore, so don't worry. That's all <laughs> right. We'll, we'll, we'll message your sister after this. And, <laughs> yeah. uh, get the end. She's a good in. She's a good in. She's got some great contacts. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. Amazing. Honestly, this has been, for an episode to come back to, having a little bit of a break, this has been a really nice episode. It's been I've a variety, it. hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, Lumi really has. Lumi spas. People leave. <laughs> this and they turn the cameras off they're like fucking hell it was like therapy like, yeah <laughs> we, no, we no, I just know I need therapy now <laughs> yeah. I'm leaving I'm really sorry about highlighting yeah. that <laughs> you can thank me in years to come yeah literally <laughs> all of our notes basically we just didn't touch on probably about nine different things we went in our own, <laughs> oh, no. own. but th- this is what the joy of the podcast is yeah. um, is there anything uh, you want to plug before you go in, uh, like social medias um, 
people want to reach just out to, to you. follow me and obviously like anyone that is looking for a new rider new you know po- yeah. possibility that you know presenter. think of me present it i'm just i'm just loads of things <laughs> lovely <laughs> and keep an eye out for your social media channel with the yes. next venture that's coming soon yes, do you want exactly. people to message you if they're interested about what uh that might yeah be? definitely yeah yeah like i mainly use so um Instagram is like my main platform, really. Um, so your Instagram handle is at Yaz Show Jumper. At Yaz Show Jumper, there you go. Nice, no, the one and only Yaz Show Jumper. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you very much for listening to today's episode. Um, if you've been watching it, thank you for watching it. Uh, cross stream it. Make sure you follow, uh, like, and share it. It means the world. Um, I don't think we've got any plugs. Do we want to do any plugs? No, I think we're all good. Nothing really coming up. No, that we've got. No, all good. Sweet, fantastic. Well, thank you, everyone, <laughs> and we will see you on the next one. Peace. Lovely. Thank you. Nice.